This episode brought to you by HelloFresh. Delicious pre-measured ingredients and simple chef-made recipes delivered to your doorstep every week. I'm a nostalgia critic guy, remember it, so you don't have to. So, when did this guy turn into the most awesome actor alive? Don't get me wrong, I hear Keanu Reeves is an awesome human being and everything, but I'm talking specifically about him as an entertainer. In the post-Bill and Ted days, it was like pulling teeth to get a performance that wasn't stilted and wooden. In fact, it's still rumored that the Matrix films were shot with a tree in shades. In recent years, though, the guy has become a non-stop bulldozer of ass-kicking cool. From his amazing acting and fighting in the John Wick films, to his hilarious cameos he makes in films like Always Be My Maybe, to even making kids laugh in Toy Story sequels. Yeah, I said sequels, that's cute, you think there won't be more. Somewhere the guy went from box office boredom to box office fire. And you know what? Good for him. It's great when an actor not only hits a second wind, but it's ten times more entertaining than the first wind he started out with. Which makes it all the more fun to discuss his winds of passing with his epic little flopbusters he's done in the past. Like Constantine! <laughs> Released in 2005, the comic book-based epic did little to win over fans, critics, or your average moviegoer. Back in the day when people were saying less, "Oh, a Keanu Reeves movie, and more, "Oh, a Keanu Reeves movie. This was one of the biggest box office low points in Reeves' career. Some would say this wasn't a shock as the movie had about as much personality as Reeves' acting did at the time. Which is somewhere in the mathematical ballpark of how many nutrients a KFC Cheeto sandwich has. While we can certainly smile now knowing Reeves' career has made an explosive comeback, it is interesting to marvel at what a deep yet dull pit he had to climb out of. Is that pit deep enough to reach the flames of H.E. Double Hockey Stick? Or is it too boring to even pull that off? Well, let's take a look. This is a movie so bad nobody else could possibly make a comeback from it. Except her. Maybe her. Give me something! Thank you. This is Constantine. Ooh, it's Warner Brothers after they release Crimes of Grindelwald. Eh, great, now I'm just wishing this was a Wolfenstein movie. Whoa, Wolfenstein. We open on two guys outside a burnt down church discovering an artifact wrapped in a Nazi flag. You know, you gotta be careful in the wide open desert. An incredibly quiet car at top speed might sneak up on you. Hence the traffic signs. He walks away without a scratch, though, as we cut to an apartment being approached by a man putting his cigarette out on the camera. As it looks like this man is Constantine, played by Reeves. Apparently a girl is possessed, and he's there to beat the Satan out of her. This is Constantine. Faker. She just wants Reeves to thrust himself on her bed. Few people know the best way to conduct an exorcism is by punching. I need a mirror. Oh, I have to make sure my hair didn't defluff mid-punch. Oh, oh, oh. Well, he punched our daughter. He must know what he's doing. They place a mirror above her as that somehow transports the demon inside. Free boss. The power of Christ make you sit and spin, asshole! At this point, you have to wonder if the E in Wily e. Coyote stands for exorcist because they have very similar ways of doing things. The mirror is destroyed and the girl is saved, but that doesn't mean he has to stop brooding. Take that, you stupid lighter! I like to close hard. Okay, audience, just look at my angst for seven seconds. Okay, good. Rachel Weisz plays a detective named Angela, who thinks she has a sixth sense in finding and killing criminals. She has a twin sister named Isabel in a super secure mental ward that only failed to stop 12 people jumping to their deaths. This week. Meanwhile, at the same establishment, Constantine sees he has lung cancer, to which his doctor calms him down with her comforting words. Wouldn't be the first time. Well, that's an amazing bedside manner. Wouldn't be the first time. I mean, look on the bright side. Shut up. Angela goes to see her dead sister and refuses to believe it was suicide. Hold the door. You're going down. I wonder if I can help it. 
Yeah, well, 2019 me would make that sound cool. Meanwhile, at big brooding Oh The Woe Apartments, Jesus, how much money do exorcists make? Q comes along to give him some holy weapons. I know technically his name isn't Q, but yes it is. What is it exactly with you and bugs? I just like them. It's dragon's breath. Ah, yes. Stories of heaven and hell, exorcisms and angels often have dragons in them. What Bible did you reference, The Hobbit? This is Kramer. Chaz Kramer, asshole. Meanwhile, Shia LaBeouf plays a taxi driver named Chaz Kramer, because of course Shia LaBeouf plays a taxi driver named Chaz Kramer, who takes on the role of annoying sidekick. Because of course he takes on the role of annoying sidekick. How much longer do I have to be your slave, John? You're not my slave, Chaz. My very appreciated apprentice. It's funny, this exact conversation took place between him and Michael Bay in the Transformers movies. Constantine goes to talk to the angel Gabriel, played by Tilda Swinton, to see if he can get his time on Earth extended. Also, a get out of hell free card would be nice. He's still trying to buy your way into heaven? Why haven't I served him enough? What does he want from me? I told you a million times, Bill and Ted 3! Everything you've ever done, you've only ever done for yourself. You're the one who should go to hell, half-breed. Aslan killing bitch! And you're going to go to hell? Because of the life you took, you're fucked. Go with God, or whatever. Constantine goes to- oh, what do you think he's doing? Brooding? Yeah, he's brooding. Chevy, our billboards are cryptic if you only read half of them. Hey buddy, got a light? But a person made entirely of bugs! You know, maybe it could be his origin story. Starts attacking him on the street. I think it's supposed to be scary, but honestly, I'm waiting for Matthew Lillard and Sarah Michelle Gellar to rip a mask off him. Of course. Cars! Every demon's Achilles heel! Hell, that should have been the Chevy billboard. It'd be a great challenge for car dealers. I know where you're going. You're going to midnight. He goes to a bar described as... Oh, what is it described as? It's a haven for those who rise and those who fall. I remember reading about this truck. Even if LeBeouf didn't say it, it sounds stupid. As gaining entrance is saying what's behind a card without looking at it. Two frogs on a bench. Two frogs on a bench. Close. Could there be a buzzer to shock him? I think most movie-going experiences would be better with that. Even if he's not in the movie! He sees a guy named Midnight, played by Jaiman Hansu, as he tries to figure out what's going on in the demon world. Something's coming. Spooky. Both is made my entire night. You know the rules of my house. While here, you will Can you move that them. thing, that, that, that rocking thing, please? Oh, I mean, uh, genius, maybe? You're on your way down, fresh meat. Okay, now I'm just thinking as embarrassing as some of these line deliveries are, how much more embarrassing they'd be if Shia LaBeouf delivered them. Mmm, finger looking good! I'm sorry, it's been years since I've made a Shia LaBeouf joke. It's like visiting an old friend. So Angela thinks she may get some answers from Constantine in figuring out what happened to her sister. I've heard your name around the precinct. I know the circles you travel in, the occult, demonology, exorcisms. I mean, what do you think we talk about the precinct? Drug bust, homicide? <laughs> I thought that with your background, you could at least point me in the right direction. Sure. <laughs> Keanu Reeves pointing at door will be right back. My sister was a devout Catholic. That means if she'd taken her own life... Her soul would go straight to hell, where she'd be ripped apart over and over in screaming brutal agony. That about right? You seem like a sweet guy. How are you single? Constantine gets a vision, though, that convinces him to listen to her. What if I told you that God and the devil made a wager? Kind of standing bet for the souls of all mankind. I'd say Neil Gaiman needed a paycheck. But the lights go off and Constantine senses something is coming. Oh God, it's worse than hell. It's a Max Payne sequel. Make sure Mila Kunis' schedule is full. I really believe she wouldn't commit suicide. Never in a million years. Let's see if she's in hell. Boss! 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 So Keanu Reeves puts his feet in a pot of water while holding a cat. I feel like that's a caption contest. As he asks Angela to leave the apartment. God, I hate this part. He always says that before the director yells action. So it turns out holding a cat while setting your feet in a pot of water does send you to hell! Nah, yeah, it was close. I was holding a chihuahua while standing in the toilet of pee pee juice. As he discovers Angela's sister is there. They're performing the incredible torture of just letting her stand there. BASTARDS!
Ah, that feeling when you have a better hell than Spawn, but not by much. He grabs her paper bracelet and brings it back to show that she really is down there. Which begs the question, did the paper bracelet go to hell? Did the hospital gown not fit the Pope? How does this work? How is this possible? I need to eat. Despite my performance, I am in fact human. Nothing like quenching that inner pits of damnation journey with pancakes. What'd you think I hop stood for? I could see things. Things you shouldn't have to see. He talks about how he tried to kill himself due to his visions of demons and his parents not believing him. Officially, I was dead for two minutes. Take it from me, two minutes of hell is a lifetime. It's like hearing a dad joke. Lasts only two minutes, but feels like an eternity of torture. They go to where Isabel died to see if there's any clues she left behind. Here's a fun scene. 2005 Keanu Reeves trying to act angry. She thought it up great feelings. I put your stick. She knew you'd come. She counted on you to see what she saw. Sorry, I didn't mean to raise my voice like that. As a detective, I'm totally cool with you manhandling me like a pimp looking for a stolen 20. What did she do, Angela? I don't know. You know what she did. What are you afraid of? What did she do, Angela? What did she do? I don't know! Well, you don't need to yell. Sheesh. They find a Bible verse written on the window, because in both night and day, nobody noticed that. But they figure out the verse doesn't exist. Corinthians goes to 21x in the Bible in hell. They have Bibles in hell. Don't say it like that. This movie's supposed to be serious. That's literally the line written. Oh, well, uh, yeah. They just so happen to have the bad book, and the passage doesn't look good. The sins of the father would only be exceeded by the sins of the son. Sign of Mammon. The son of the devil. That's impossible! Detective Schwarzenegger solved this in 1999! The year of the devil. Upside down. Plus one. Maybe this wasn't solved. Am I the only one, by the way, who thinks when he says the name Mammon, he's actually saying my mom? Mammon would be the last demon we'd ever want crossing over to our plane. Mammon would need divine assistance. Mammon would need the help of God. This is sounding less like demonic rituals and more like a guy who doesn't know how your mama jokes work. My mom would need divine assistance. My mom would need the help of God. My mom's so fat she needs divine assistance from God to cross over into Weight Watchers. <laughs> Mama's a big old greasy hoe. <laughs> Q is attacked though as flies shoot out of his body causing him to suffocate. Oh, I get it, because before he said he liked bugs and now bugs killed him. Well, this is what happens when you use an irony coupon at O'Henry. Hello, dog! Hello, Fresh. <gasps> Hello, Fresh! Hello, dog! But you can't talk! Of course I can talk! Food can't actually talk. And I can be delicious, too! What do you mean, Hello, Fresh? I mean I'm America's number one meal kit! With easy, seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door! So all you have to do is cook and enjoy! I'm conveniently delicious and deliciously convenient! Well, I don't hear many talking meal kits, so you tell me how! <laughs> Gladly! It's home-cooked meals made simple! HelloFresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality, regardless of your comfort in the kitchen! From step-by-step -step recipes to pre-measured ingredients, you'll have everything you need to get a wow-worthy dinner on the table in just about 30 minutes! What?! 30 minutes! Oh, okay, that's what I thought you said. You can make deliciousness part of your week! Break out of your dinner rut with our 17 seasonal chef curated recipes each week. Wow! There's something for everyone from family recipes to calorie smart and vegetarian and fun menu series like Hall of Fame and Kraft Burgers. HelloFresh is flexible and fits your lifestyle. Add extra meals to your weekly order as well as yummy sides like garlic bread and cookie dough. Cookie dough is for cookies. Easily change your delivery days, food preferences, and skip a week whenever you need. Well, that's amazing because I'm not a very good cook. I know. How? Because I'm convenient, remember? Oh, right. Remember! Yeah. My favorite meal is the cranberry apple pork chop. It's so easy to make and so delicious to eat. You can even add your own ingredients to mix it up a bit. Tell them about the deal. I have a deal? You have a deal! Here's a deal! You have a deal! For $80 off your first month of HelloFresh, go to this address and enter Nostalgia80. Again, go to this address and enter Nostalgia80 for $80 off your first month of HelloFresh.
It's like receiving eight meals for free. That it is, HelloFresh. Why are you talking to food? That's weird. Don't talk to food, it's weird. Be like me and go from saying hello fast food to hello fresh. Go to this link and enter Nostalgia80 for $80 off your order today. Seriously, don't talk to your food, it's weird. So while the indestructible guy from the intro continues his journey, Oh my god, that's so clever! Angela admits she used to see things when she was younger too. Your sister embraced her gift. You denied yours. Denial is a better idea. I abandoned her, John. Oh my god, you're in jello! Oh, no, that's just awkward directing. You do this, there's no turning back. So it's a little confusing, but I guess by having her brush with death, her visions will become a lot more clear. So they decide to drown her. I've heard of crazier ways actors wanted out of a movie. So do I have to take the rest of my clothes off or can I leave them on? Oh. I'm thinking. <laughs> That's just a little I might accidentally kill you and these might be your last moments humor. On the plus side, my boner feels great. My water. It's a universal conduit. Now ask me if there's water in hell. So water in hell. <laughs> you know, th this is fun trying to save my sister from everlasting damnation. We should really make it our Tuesday thing. You have to be fully submerged. For how long? As long as it takes and refrain from asking about my rubber ducky. I may fight demons and hell spawns, but I will never take a bath without Mr. Quackums. Fun fact, if you almost drown in a bathroom, your bathtub explodes. Science. She gains clue finding powers, I guess, and Constantine puts together that it was a half-breed named Balbazar who did it. Angela insists that her crime-fighting insights would be useful, but Constantine refuses her help. In this fiery scene that shows both their determination and their passion. I'm coming with you. You're staying in the car. Stop it! Can't you two see you're in love?! Constantine breaks into Balbazar's place and starts making things holy. Okay. You get a badass cookie. He tries interrogating him by performing last rites, meaning he'll go straight to heaven. Which is a terrible punishment for him. Again, that's a pretty funny idea. Well, at least things can't get any sillier than that. Aside from recreating the opening to Howard the Duck. I'm just praying in one of those rooms Al Pacino from Devil's Advocate is there taking a bath so we can see some devil titties. Constantine goes back to midnight and says he needs a certain chair. Show about this. No. I don't care, I have blood diamond lines to memorize! He sees the journey of the spear and where it ended up as he snaps back into horrid reality. Horrid, horrid reality. I, I just don't think that it's a great idea, you know, you go on a solo mission to save the world. I, that's, that's what I, that's my vote. Might I also add, no, 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 trust me, in a few years, this is all I'll be. She said I didn't. What are you doing? Pray. Your credibility will need it. Angela wakes up where her sister died and is greeted by an unfriendly visitor. Die! Please die! Kinda die! Give me a letter of recommendation saying I made you die! At least applaud somehow I fit 30 bullets into this thing or die! Oh, I suck in this. Constantine turns the sprinklers into holy water by putting a cross in it. Don't think that's how it works. I mean, if a Mickey Mouse doll is dropped into a bucket of water, does that mean the water belongs to Disney? Who am I kidding? Yes, it does. As we partake in an action sequence so cool, you'll swear Blade already did it. Blade already did it. Okay, did I hear Shia LaBeouf doing better than me out there? That is not cool, writers! Angela is possessed by Mammon. You know, it's how well we get to know the villain that makes this film work. As Constantine tries fighting her... him... them off. I don't know demonic pronouns. Not bad, kid. Chaz Kramer. <laughs> oh no, I need a lot more Shia LaBeouf bashing than that! <laughs> Just play it on a continual loop. I could watch this for hours. 
I will watch this for hours. So Shia gets axed off. One more for the road. As Constantine discovers, it was Gabriel who helped Mammon gain his powers. Each one of you granted redemption from the Creator. All of you. You just have to repent. And God takes you into his bosom. Don't give me this pure flick shit. I have Shia LaBeouf smashing. I could be watching. <laughs> Squee. She literally blows him away as he tries praying to the big man himself. Are you there, God? It's me, John. Which one? You play a John in every other movie. Oh, uh, the Constantine one. Good night. He decides to kill himself, cementing that he'll go to hell, but he gets a visit from the devil himself first. He's played by Peter Stormare, because I think we'd be concerned if a person like him didn't play the devil at some point. You're the one soul that would come up here to collect myself. Mm-hmm. Don't make us regret this choice movie. He danced in red spandex with penis cutting scissors. And somehow that's seeming more dignified. So again, a little confusing, but if I'm reading it right, it looks like the devil wasn't aware Mammon was being set loose. Keep better track of your kids, Satan. And when he sees what's going on, he banishes Mammon and sets Gabriel's wings ablaze. As a show of thanks, Constantine asks that Isabella go to heaven. Satan agrees, thinking he can drag him to hell and- Wait, that was a selfless thing, wasn't it? This one belongs to me. Yeah, I'm sure most people flick the bird when entering the kingdom of God. Who does quality control in this shitty afterlife? Speaking of which, the devil drags him back by... Deviling, I don't know. As he and Angela wake up to find that Gabriel is human but wants to be sent back. Do you want revenge? Do it. End of my life. That's a solid impression of everybody watching this movie right now. That's called pain. Get used to it. Oh, I know I will when I read the reviews for Day the Earth Stood Still. Constantine and Angela think about being a couple until they realize they have no chemistry whatsoever. He goes from being a chain smoker to a gum chewer. That's moral progress. And even Shia gets one more scene after the end credits. You did good, Ken. I pity the poor schmuck who has him as a guardian angel. Oh, I'm off to blackmail someone so I can be Mo Williams! Well, that's a sequel I'm glad I'll never see. Constantine is a pretty silly movie, which honestly would be fine if it wasn't so boring. The film weirdly takes its goofy setup way too seriously and forgets that you can be both dark and fun at the same time. Batman, Blade, and Dread are all dark but fun. This is just long, dull, and lifeless. I'm glad everyone in this movie went on to better things, ish, and their talents were discovered in better productions. Because man, there ain't no way in hell anyone's potential is shining here. I'm the nostalgia critic, I remember- one more time. <laughs> I remember it so you don't have to. Hey folks, Doug Walker here. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to do a different charity shout out this week, so I'm just gonna do the same one I did last week, the Intrepid Fallen Heroes Fund. It's a really fantastic charity. I'm just gonna play the same video I ran last week. Again, check it out, it's really wonderful. Click on the link and see all the good that they do. The Intrepid Fallen Heroes Fund builds critically needed centers for treating United States military personnel suffering the effects of traumatic brain injury and post-traumatic stress. These injuries have severely impacted the lives of hundreds of thousands of men and women who have served selflessly in defending our nation. To help address this urgent need, they're building a series of 10 specially designed treatment facilities, called Intrepid Spirit Centers, on military bases across the nation. These centers act as gymnasiums for the brain, providing service members with the most advanced care available to address the complex symptoms of TBI and PTS. Seven of these centers are open and the eighth center is currently underway. More than 90% of patients treated in these centers are able to continue on active duty. Click on the link and see what you can do to help so many brave men and women be the most that they can be.